I'm Samantha Raisin Walsh. Um, my position is I'm the Officer of Advancement and Alumni at Denver Jewish Day School. And so I focus on um, working for, like I help with our annual events, but I really focus on donor stewardship and cultivation as well as alumni relations. This is our big annual fundraiser that we do every year. We honor two to three people. Um, and it raises about a quarter of our budget of the, the money that we raise all year. We raise about 1.6 million total in fundraising dollars. And this gala raises about 400,000 of that. Um, and the 1.6 million is about a quarter of our overall school budget. Um, the rest is tuition and other fees. Um, and so it's a significant chunk of our overall budget. And so we were continuing to fundraise and we were continuing to like sell tribute ads up until basically when we canceled. It was probably 10 days before our gala that we realized there was a possibility we were gonna really need to cancel. And then we made the decision exactly one week before officially, but it was also serendipitous timing because we, it became clear that everything was getting canceled right around then. It didn't feel like a hard choice. It felt like it was a very obvious choice. Whereas two days before that, it felt like a hard conflicting choice. But that Wednesday, it was like, no, we definitely have to cancel. And a day later, everything was being mass canceled. We, we always do a 24 hour digital campaign in May. And so we were looking at the graduate platform as an option for that against a different platform that I've used before. And we kind of had weighed the pros and cons of the different aspects of it. Um, what felt like the, the deciding factor for us for this campaign was that it had the campaign options. And so we could, um, we could ha have our, our two different, <clears throat> excuse me, our two different honorees and then our alumni speaker who was supposed to speak, we can kind of give them a campaign page where we could post their video. And so we reached out to you guys, I think about 10 days before the event and then kind of finalized everything. And I think we even maybe signed the contract the day, like that evening after that we made the official decision or maybe early the next morning. Um, and we had a kickoff call. I think maybe it was the next morning we had the kickoff call um, because we knew we had to do, so we usually raise um, you know, $80,000 in the room around, and we have a match. We were, at the time, we were still fundraising for the match dollars, the money that we would raise in advance to then tell people that their gift is being doubled. So we had about, we thought about 100,000 that we still wanted to raise between the match dollars and then the in-room money. Um, so we were still doing that and then kind of pivoting to doing an online fundraiser. We tried to make sure our language was very sensitive in the emails that we sent, in the online platform that we understand that this is such a crazy time, but that the school still needs these funds that we typically raise in the room. We really relied on our lay leadership, which I think is always true of these kinds of campaigns, but we really relied on our lay leadership to help us do the fundraising, because um, you can't call a gajillion people with your staff. So we asked all of our host committee, anybody who had invited people to sit with them, we asked if they would reach out to their table. And so we gave them a couple of reminders about this is what's coming up. And then we also asked our board, obviously, to help us with that. And we had a call with um, five or six lay leaders who typically help solicit for us um, on the Friday before. And we went through our prospect list of sort of the top end prospects of people we thought would give more significant dollars. And so we started calls to them. We literally got the last gift to hit our, like, our new goal with three minutes to spare. Um, so <laughs> it was a little crazy. I'm sure nobody sets up a campaign like this in one week, but I think it's because we focused, this was like our only priority. We weren't like doing other work. And we were trying to do a few things, like we had to get our virtual um, tribute journal live because people had paid for that. And so we had to send that out as part of our communication. So there are a few things that related to the regular dinner, but we weren't working on seating charts and you know the print things that we would have had to take with us. Um, so, we got a couple of um, significant gifts from people that we didn't really expect from that, you know, posted anonymously on the, like when they gave it online, they, they checked the box to not be listed. Um, we're not like completely shocked by them. Like we've gotten some donations from them before, but I mean, you just don't know. So I don't know if one of them was not planning on being at the dinner. So I guess they wouldn't have given that gift otherwise. They're a like relative of a staff member. Uh, and a, a staff member who's also a parent. Um, yeah, so I think there was some benefit to doing it online. Fifth Graduate has been amazing. Um, every person that we've worked with has been really supportive. Our account manager, Kayla, was on call for us 24 seven. Like she was legitimately helpful. She helped me, um, 
She helped me send out the last email when we hit our goal and we wanted to make sure we sent out that email. She helped us troubleshoot everything. Um, I mean, she was amazing. Um, yeah, we felt very well supportive. It wouldn't have been possible to do it in the time frame we did, I think, without the kind of support that we got from Graduate.